house, find the flowers, find the mud in his car. Everything's <laughs> when I brought it to the door, she broke my <laughs> foot, took it, and took my keys. <laughs> call was the wife called up said that her husband was there at the house yelling screaming pounding on the door she wasn't sure how he was going to react with us and that he may run don't move any weapons on you okay stay there stay there don't move don't move we're staged on the side of the road uh waiting for the other deputy to, to show up and as we we're staged there started hearing screams or yells and you can see a shadowy figure just kind of or almost like just like a silhouette not even really a figure just kind of moving from left to right across the dirt road where we we're staged at kind of remind me of something out of uh, the walking dead or something to that effect once he started getting closer he actually he saw the vehicle sitting there started yelling at me at which point i identified myself and uh ordered him to turn around and he complied i was, I was grateful that you know that he did what he did and it, Without incident, he was taken into, uh, he was detained. Bring him here. Go there you go. Oh, God. I cannot walk, so don't ask me to. Okay. Do not ask me to. All right, anything on your poke stick or hurt me? Hell. What? Hell, I can't talk. Okay. Hell no. Hell no. Hey, do you need the fire department to check you out? I need the ambulance. His side of the story was that he was invited over to the house by his wife. She had let him in the back door, and once the door was open, she had thrown something down and um, onto the top of his foot, which was clearly damaged. Uh, the handcuffs were taken off, and he was transported to the hospital. I knew that if I needed to go find him, I, I could locate him again. That wasn't a concern. Um, he was intoxicated. I mean, you can just see that just by his demeanor, as well as when he was walking up, he had a beer in his hand, and he had actually admitted to you know, drinking throughout the night. So once he was transported, went over and I talked with his wife, Terry. Terry had a different version of the story. No. He's trying to make up with me because we're going through a divorce right now. Okay. But I'm not up for it. He was somewhat invited or there was an agreement or something like that that they were going to go meet up even though this order of protection was in place. Pretty much what that means, it's a uh, restraining order. Some other states call them that. Um, I think there's probably a little bit of uh, discourse between them because she was uh, expecting him possibly to work something out. If you're engaging, you're technically violating it, it just as much. The legal advocate so. told me not to let him see him at all, which kind of made me feel rotten. I can I can see where you're coming from, but at the same time, there's a purpose to having that order of protection and everything in place. Her story was very just a little bit different. That you know he tried to uh, come into the house. The door was open. She you know, told him to get out, get out, and he eventually scooted his butt out the door and she shut the door on him. The only thing that we could figure out with his foot was that there was a pretty heavy fire pit out back and uh, we believe that he kicked it. Um, unfortunately, in this situation, the biggest victim here is their son, so it's unfortunate that he has to see all that kind of stuff, especially between his parents.